Hey, this is Will Martin. Uh, I wanted to give an update on the progress of my tilting three-wheeled electric car. So I did a lot of work yesterday on both the front suspension and the rear suspension. Uh, I guess I can start with the front suspension. <clears throat> so I added these uh, three big pieces of aluminum. My plan is to bolt them together and they will act as the upper part of the chassis. They will hold the pickup points here for the upper A-arms. And then they allow the tilting frame, which you can see in here, to tilt. Um, so you can see right now I have it sort of uh, showing the car tilting, him going into a corner here. Uh, let me just focus on the front suspension. I'll just open that up. Here we go. All right. This is just the front suspension. So as you can see, the tilting bar is here. And it's, you know, tilting to the left, which means the car is tilting to the right. Um, these two rams here are uh, combined, they are linear actuators, and combined they give about a thousand pounds of tilting force. I added in a rack and pinion uh, steering rack here, uh, and you can see it's connected with these uh, rod ends and steering rods to the uprights here. As you can see, there's still a lot of, uh, I have some clearance issues on some things. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but the uh, this arm is going through there, so that's a clearance issue. There's a clearance issue here. I need to do some work. Also, the, the current location of the steering rack is giving me a lot of bump steer. Uh, so I think I need to put it more in line with the, uh, the axes of uh, these uh, upper and lower A-arms. Um, I'm going to have to just do some research on steering because I actually don't know a lot about how you place uh, steering racks. Um, but I just wanted to get it in to, to get everything hooked up to, you know, sort of prove to myself that I could <laughs> get this all hooked up because there are combined... Uh, for each side, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven points of contact for each side. So there's 22 different points of contact, uh, and moving parts in this suspension design. It's as simple as I could make it, but it's still very complicated. Um, so as you can see, the, uh, the, the two uh, dampers with the springs go up through the center of this uh, of this frame. Uh, they connect to the tilting frame here. So essentially what you're doing to tilt the car is, is you're moving just the uh, just the dampers and the springs will push down on one side and pull up on the other and that will cause uh, the uprights to tilt into uh, the corner. Um, and I, I took a, a good long look at the a, a Priya Magnet uh, three-wheeler design, and I realized that my past suspension design had the upper arms connecting to the tilting frame, and that was uh, that's the incorrect way to do it. You, in order to tilt a car, you need to just have just move the dampers uh, left and right, and that will that will tilt both the car and the uprights together in unison. Um, and then, you know, that'll allow you to maintain your, uh, your steering rack, uh, in line with everything and just makes everything work a lot better. So that's, that's, uh, what the current design of the front suspension is. Actually, let me turn off these, uh, sketches so you can see it. It's a little cleaner there. Um, my other plan here is to add front headlight here, uh, turn signals here and here. Um, the motor I have is actually a liquid cooled motor, so I plan to add a radiator about here. Uh, there's a lot of internal, um, clearance issues right now. I don't know if you can see this, but the, uh, this is the tilting frame and it is hitting the front part right here. There you go. There's, you can see this is hitting this right now, so I need to, sort of bore out the inside of that. Um, but I think, you know, this design, obviously I'd love to have just like one giant piece of aluminum that I could machine all this out of, but that would be both difficult from a manufacturing perspective and it would be uh, extremely expensive to have that kind of 
uh, piece of aluminum. So these pieces are, uh, you know, about 300 bucks each or so, and the machining isn't super, super complicated. So uh, you can, you know, get a shop to machine these and then uh, it just all bolts together. Um, the other really nice thing about doing all this in aluminum is that it won't require any welding at all uh, to build the car. So once you put everything together, it's literally just the assembly is just bolting things together. You don't have to do any welding. There, there's no real fabrication involved. It's just assembly, uh, which should make this a very simple car to put together and also to uh, change out parts. Uh, you know, if, if I want to change the design of how high or low these pickup points are, I would just... Um, get these two re-machined and then, you know, change the pickup points and bolt it all in. I wouldn't have to weld stuff out and grind stuff and all that. So, so that's how this is. Um, let me go then to the rear. Uh, I worked quite a bit on the rear suspension. It's all pretty much working now. The old uh, motor I had in here was uh, a model of an air-cooled motor. Um, and it wasn't totally accurate to the size of the uh, the liquid cooled motor that I'm I'm planning to use. Um, just a quick note on that: the reason I'm choosing to use a liquid cooled motor is that it's fully sealed, uh, sealed away from the environment. So I don't have to worry about you know if you drive this thing off road or something, and there's mud and dirt and water and everything getting up into here. I don't have to worry about that because it would all be sealed. Um, so the motor, you know, will perform, uh, rain or shine. And the other, the other part of that is, uh, because it's, it's cooled from the front here with a radiator, um, it's a lot easier to keep the motor cool in high performance driving, um, <clears throat> as opposed to trying to, to get a lot of air past it. Um, you know, air cooled engines are great because they're light. Anyone who's driven a, you know, Volkswagen, uh, Beetle design dune buggy knows that having an air cooled engine is, is great, um, but they they do have cooling issues and performance issues as a result. So uh, with a liquid cooled engine or motor, you get a lot more uh, power, you know, for uh, small design, and it allows you to just uh, keep it clean, basically. <clears throat> All right, so the rear. Let me uh, just open up just the rear suspension here, so you can, you can isolate this. There we go. So you can see I got the chain going from uh, the motor to the rear swing arm. The rear swing arm I have mounted on these uh, bearings that I have bolted to these two pieces of aluminum here. So these are, uh, took quite a while to figure out what the design was going to be of these that would fit both the motor, the seats, the bearings, and connect it to the chassis, and provide uh, a pickup point for the rear suspension damper. Uh, so that took a while, but I, I figured that out. Um, you can see it's got kind of a funky curved uh, surface so that it can it can hold the seat. Um, so the damper uh, connects here and then up here. I have this room so that, uh, let me see if I can move this up and down. There you go. So it, uh, you know, it, it can move the, the suspension damper without uh, interfering with anything. Uh, and then the chain takes a second, but it'll move with it. There we go. <clears throat> the seat um, has, let me see if I can just isolate just the seat. There we go. The seat has these uh, mounting holes. And this seat is a uh, off the shelf carbon fiber seat that you can buy for a recumbent bicycle. I believe it's a German company that makes them. And so you can see there's these mounting holes in the back and then these mounting holes on the bottom. Let me exit the isolation. And so I designed two little frames. This one holds, uh, bolts the seat down in the front. And as you can see, there's uh, still clearance for the seat all around everything. There's, there's clearance all the way up to the back and then this is the uh, frame uh, that holds the seat and bolts it down to this rear or back frame and then you just bolt this into the seat and bolt it into the frame uh, then the frame so there's these two frames I'm planning to uh, bolt them down here and here uh, and then they would bolt into this middle frame 
so it'd bolt through the side in a few places probably. I haven't figured that out yet. Uh, and then the, the rear frame I have holding... Uh, one of the things I really wanted to do with this car is ha be able to trailer it. Uh, so the idea would be, you know, it is an electric car, but what if I wanted to race it? Um, I could trailer it to a racetrack. It would be fully charged. And then I could have a good time and then trailer it home. Uh, but I, you know, what, what if I could do this without actually having a trailer? I would just pull the car. I wouldn't have to, I wouldn't have to drive it up and down off a trailer. I wouldn't have to own a separate trailer that I would like keep in my driveway. It would just be a, a, a you know, it'd be way better if I could do this without actually having a physical trailer, right? So, um, this is a two inch, uh, SAE spec trailer hitch. Um, and as you can see, you can, you know, put your pin through here and you can put the uh, trailer hitch, uh, in the back and then, uh, connect it to, uh, your truck or car or whatever that you're towing with. <coughs> and then I, uh, I built these, uh, these are, uh, shot glass taillights. Uh, I thought these were pretty cool. I've seen these on a couple of motorcycles and, uh, they, you know, they, they have that sort of. 1950s uh art deco car kind of uh bullet you know light look but uh you know they're easy to make um so they're just a uh, machined aluminum that you know you put on a lathe and then uh they this screws into this base uh and then you have i'd have two yellow ones for the turn signal and a red one up here uh for the rear tail light um so that is the rear suspension so let me get out of here. So that is the full, uh, the full car right now. Um, so I have the rack and pinion coming up, uh, through here into a, let me see if I can just pull that up. It's going up into a 90 degree angle box. There we go. Which, uh, it's just a standard right angle one to one ratio gearbox. Um, and then the idea would be from there, I would have the steering shaft go backwards, uh, back through all of these. It would connect to the steering wheel. And there you go. That's, that's how simple it would be, uh, to get the steering working. Um, other than that, that's, that's, uh, that's what I'm, that's where I'm at right now. Quite a bit of, uh, work yesterday to get it to this point uh and going forward I, I just have to work on some of the clearances i'm gonna uh, go through some of my uh design library books that i have about uh suspension design and steering design and that kind of thing and try to figure out what the optimal uh, placement of the steering rack is to prevent bump steer um i did uh run this suspension geometry through an online uh suspension geometry uh, solver and it gave me a, a smaller length a arm for the top which uh, gives me a, a two degree static camber uh, and then gives me sort of a suspension design uh, that that gives the the best characteristics in bump uh, and tilt um, so as you can see it looks it looks pretty good uh, except for the steering and uh, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I appreciate all the feedback I get from you guys. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube page. Go to willmartin.com and you can leave me uh, comments on the YouTube page or there. I'm also uh, putting this project up on Local Motors. Um, it's an awesome, awesome company, and they are uh, one of the best places on the on the web to uh, to get people to look at the designs for cars and 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 give feedback and that kind of thing. So. Uh, also check me out on, on Local Motors, and I uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.